everybody, Bama Cooley here, and today I have a special treat. I have a Maserati Gran Turismo Modena Edition right behind me. Maserati wanted to go for luxury and athleticism and blend it all into one car. Did they succeed? Let's find out. We're gonna review the inside, we're gonna review the outside, we're gonna review the engine, and we're gonna drive it and give it to business and see what this car is all about and see if it's worth the money. Come on. Let's go. To me, this car fits the description of what you want when you think of your top two or three sports cars and how they would look. You got the aggressive front, aggressive lines coming down here across the hood. You got the fancy LED headlight. You got the aggressive grill sucking in all that air, going that turbocharged V6. Here's your Maserati emblem. And then of course you got the Trident right here. And down here you go into the black spoiler. I really like the gray color. Uh, I know there's a blue color that's really sharp but I think Maserati definitely hit it out of the ballpark with how they've made this car look. And so let's go check around the side and see if the same aggressive style holds over there. Coming over to the side, you still have the same aggressive nature. This just looks like a good sports car. You got 20 inch wheels in the front. You got 21s in the back. You got the huge red Maserati brake calipers here. With the Maserati emblem in the center. The brake discs themselves are huge. Coming over to the side, you see you've got your functional venting here. You got Medina written in gloss black here, which matches the gray color really well. You have your color coordinated rear view mirrors. And you can kind of follow the lines as you see going down through here, how aerodynamic this car is. The design of this car has its origins as F1. I'm not saying this is an F1 car, but with the Medina edition or the Gran Turismo edition, they did make some things comparable or take some lessons learned from some of the F1 designs and you can definitely see it in this car. Coming back to the rear quarter panel, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but you see you have a huge line right here where the wheel well kicks out, giving it that wide stance and that wide aggressive look that you wanna see in a sports car. I like the black trident here. I'm a fan of when automakers, especially on their specialty cars, really make their brands look good on that car and really color match it like the gloss black with the gray or anything like that. I think that's really good. I think you want it to stand out and you want everybody to know exactly what you're driving. Coming to the back end, here you see the same sleek design coming down to the trunk with a little bit of a raised lip. Maserati across the back, Gran Turismo right here. And you do have the chrome colored quad exhaust tips. In my opinion, these tips should be black. The black would match the tridents, it would match the Medina lettering, it would match the front. So if I had this car, I would get these powder coated black or try to get the option, maybe there's a night package to where they would be black. Before we go inside, um, here's the key fob. I don't know if you can see on camera, but you got your Maserati symbol here. You got your lock, unlock, and your trunk opening. Let's take a look at the trunk. It actually has, for this type of car, it actually has a decent amount of space. It goes pretty far back. So you can def, I would, I would say, I don't know if you could fit a golf bag in there, but you could definitely fit groceries or whatever, cause it does go far back. I can't even hardly reach back in there. It goes far back enough. So there is some practicality here and it does have a back seat, but we all know back seats and these things are like glorified storage holders anyway. So let's go ahead and check the interior, which is supposed to be the blend of the luxury with the performance. It looks athletic on the outside and Maserati wanted to put the luxury on the inside and let's see if they achieve that. All right, everybody. The first thing you notice when you open the door, coming over here to the side is the super soft leather and nice interior. I mean, this is really soft to the touch. You got your steel popping going here. You got your upgraded Sonus Faber speaker system. There's 19 speakers in this car. Coming down here, you got your window controls, your rear view mirror controls. There's your door opening. It's actually a button. There's more speakers. So you got three speakers right here in just this door alone. You got some wood trim here, a little bit of storage. Coming over here, you see you got the Maserati, which I always like when they do this. You do have the performance pedals in here, which looks sharp on your power seats right here. So let's get in and see what she's got. One of the things about these seats is it is super soft leather. I've already sat in this seat and it's extremely comfortable. You could take a road trip in this car. So you see it is heated and cooled. You come up here and of course you got the Maserati emblem right here. You do have a back seat. I hear it's comfortable if you get back there. Of course you got some USBs and some cup holders and you actually got a little armrest up there, but I'm not getting back there. All right, let's go ahead and crank it up.
So sitting in here, like I said, the seats are really comfortable. Like you could you could take this on a six hour beach trip. Look at the steering wheel. It's really soft stitched leather. You got the Maserati emblem. Over here, you got your, where you can change your digital gauges, whatever mode, whatever information you want to look at from map to miles per hour, anything like that. Over here, you got your PSI, what you're listening to, your G meter. So here's your start stop, which I think is pretty cool. Here's your drive mode selector. So you can go comfort, GT, sport. So when you go into sport, obviously you heard the exhaust kick up. You can also put your shocks and your dampers in sport. This is an air suspension, so it will lower and raise automatically based on what mode you're in. Over here, you got your cruise control. You got your adaptive cruise control, your lane keep assist and everything over here. So it's definitely, you know, it does have the safety features that you're looking for, especially if you're on highway driving. Over, you got huge metal paddle shifters here. Of course, there you got your blinker stock and your lane keep assist and your light stock. Here you got your windshield wiper stock. Coming up here, it's just more of that soft leather. You got a speaker here. Come across, you got the digital clock here. And when you get in and the car isn't cranked, you see the trident. A digital trident right there which i think is cool looking of course here you got your infotainment center it's very responsive it's very big you can go to your drive mode explorer and there's one thing here that i really noticed that i liked so you see we're in sport but look at this graph so it tells you your responsiveness is kicked up your stiffness your acceleration your efficiency went down your electronic controls went down but say we wanted to go to gt now your responsiveness went down, your efficiency went up, chronic controls went up, your stiffness went down, and your acceleration went down. And if you go to comfort, everything went to efficient, electronic controls, lower acceleration, lower stiffness, and lower responses. I just think that's pretty cool. Here you got your drive, your manual, you got your neutral, you got your reverse, and you got your park. Here's your climate controls and your seat controls for your heated and cooled seats. Here you got a little bit of storage. It's not a lot. Two cup holders, wireless phone charging here, some USBs and a 12 volt, and a little bit of storage here. Coming over here, you see you have Italian flag, wood trim, you got Gran Turismo right there. And of course there you got more speakers and door. Like I said, this does have 19 speakers, which is a massive amount for a car like this. Up top, you got your garage door openers. Over here, you got your lock, got your trunk opener. And this is a cool thing too. This does come with the rear view camera. I think that's cool. I don't have it on my truck. I've actually never had a vehicle that's had this, but I think that's cool as hell. And the resolution on this is amazing. Like that's a Aston Martin behind us. And like I can see, I mean, it's it's high definition quality. It actually looks amazing. I'm really a big fan of this and how they did this. I would just keep this on all the time. All right, everybody. Here's the business end of this vehicle and what helps make it so special and athletic. It is a turbocharged Nutuno V6, cranking out 493 horsepower and 453 pound-feet of torque. This will go zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds and it'll go do a quarter mile in 11.9 and a top speed of 190 miles an hour. So for a V6 that is very sporty, I don't care what you say about V8s, V6s, whatever, the technology, that we have on V6s makes them pretty damn good and the exhaust on this sounds good. Yes, it's not as throaty as a V8, but it still sounds good. You got powered by Natuno. You got your Maserati Trident. You got Maserati right there. You have two air inductions feeding in this turbo V6 and it just looks like an awesome engine and it performs like an awesome engine. We're gonna, I won't put the draggy on it cause it does have a track mode in there on the inside where it will keep up with its own 60 time. So we're gonna try to put a 60 on it and I'm just gonna gun the hell out of it and see what she'll do. So you've seen the outside, you've seen the inside. We've talked about the engine. There's only one thing left to do let's drive it and see what it has let's go ahead and give it the business all right everybody we're in the maserati gran turismo and we're ready to take for a spin the interior is nice it's got a digital gauge cluster it's the infotainment center is awesome it's very responsive there's not any knobs or buttons which is a knock that a lot of people have because you control your climate controls and your heated and ventilated seats with another display panel and you do have the push buttons for the park, reverse, neutral, and drive. So, um, you know, but 
hey, let's see how she drives. Right now I have it in GT. There's three modes, Comfort, GT, and Sport. I have it in GT. You know we'll eventually take it into Sport, but let's see how the air suspension is and see how much it soaks it up before we hit it in Sport. And there is a drag race setting on this, and there is a hold on the brake that you can put on. And let's see if we can find a place to give it the business. Let's give it a little gas in GT mode. I still think that sounds pretty good. And it gets louder in the sport mode. Yes, it's a V6, but it's 483 horsepower and a ton of torque. I don't see the issue with it. As far as technology goes, like I said, with the gauge cluster and infotainment center and the camera and the rear view mirror that I'm looking at now, it's top notch. All the materials in here are top notch. 19 speakers, so premium sound system. I was listening to that earlier and it's just, I was surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised uh, with the Gran Turismo. I like how it looks. I like the, the high, uh, where the wheels are in the front, where it kicks up real high, the real aggressive lines. Just to give everybody a heads up, I don't have Augustine who was with me on the last drive with the DBX a few weeks back, and Brentwood is not exactly my town <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Let's hope I don't have to break out the Google Maps to get back. In GT mode, it really soaks up the road. I, I don't even have to put it in comfort mode because I know it will then too. You do know, notice a lack of pedal response compared to the sport mode which is normal i mean you that's going to happen but it, it still has plenty of pick up and go it does have a nice heads up display this one's currently set on um, the speed and then map the direction so you can see that yourself as a little arrow or if you can change it to so you can see like more of a performance setting like you can see your rpms or your g-forces she still gets up and goes even in the GT mode which is more of probably the city driving in the city mode I think Maserati did a pretty good job of hitting what they wanted to hit by trying to combine luxury and performance I don't think they missed it if any of at all it's one thing about driving up here in Brentwood outside of Nashville a lot of country music singers athletes you do not have a shortage of very nice cars up here. The steering wheel feels good, um, doesn't feel heavy. I wished it was a little bit thicker. Usually when it's in a sport vehicle, I like a steering wheel to be a little bit thicker. It's kind of thin, but it's good material, good leather stitching, but usually I like it to be a little bit, a little bit thicker. It makes me feel like I'm in more control, I guess. So from an engineering standpoint, you got your air suspension in here and obviously it adjusts based on the settings but more and more cars are going to the air suspension because it just really soaks everything up even in sport mode it soaks stuff up it's like you know it's amazing and like i'm about to put it in sport mode but i'm still in gt and i mean it's it's like i'm riding on glass almost it'd be nice if i knew these roads like i do the ones back home i could take these curves a little bit more aggressively so I went over the price earlier. This particular model MSRP is for is it $184 or $186,000. Like I said, I'm not going into, you know, when I reviewed the DBX, I'm not going into the, you know, is it too much money? Who's gonna pay that? A lot of people will pay it. That's why they make these cars. All I can do, tell you is how it looks to me, how it feels, how it handles, um, and things like that. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this into sport. So the gauge cluster changed, screen on the infotainment center changed. Hope it comes out on the video that I'm using on my iPhone, how pretty of a drive this is up here. Yeah, the exhaust definitely kicks up a note in the sport mode. I'm gonna go ahead and turn around up here. Skip the business a little bit. Yeah, she sounds good for V6. I'm not gonna lie. I have no issues with the sound at all. Is it as throaty as a V8? No, but it still sounds good to me. Skip the business going up this hill. It's 
got good torque. It's got good torque through the power band. I can definitely tell the suspension stiffened up. It's still comfortable, but you can definitely tell the pick. I'm, I'm vibrating a little bit more in my seat than I was in the GT mode. <laughs> Some horses. This car is fun. One issue I would have driving this every day, and I guess you would get used to it, is the hood. The front end is a little long, so I would have to be very careful about pulling in places with big curbs or the parking blocks because I'm afraid I would scrape the hell out of this. Unfortunately, I don't have the road or nowhere to go to try to see if we can get this up to top speed at 190. Maybe the more I come up here, the more I'll familiarize myself with these roads. And, uh, and working with car lock, I'll be able to know which roads I can go down and when I can go down them and not have to worry about traffic or the federales. Definitely though, if you get a chance, go to carlocknashville.com. I'll put the link in the description. They have anything you want from Alfa Romero, Bentleys, Ashton Martins, Maseratis, Rolls Royces, Lotus. If it's a luxury exotic, especially English brand, well, the Maserati's Italian, so it's got the Italian flag, but if you're looking for a high-end SUV or coupe performance car, give them a call. They'll take care of you. Definitely tell them I sent you. I'm gonna pull over here in a little bit, and see if I can't get some outside footage with this GoPro pray to God it doesn't draw. I don't know if I'll be able to get a 0-60 to 60 pull to test this drag race setting on here. Because one of the roads I know I could probably do it on is not really flat. It's more of an incline. Maybe I'll do it just to see what I can get, knowing that it's on an incline. Blinker's really loud. So, put in the comments below, based on what you've seen from the inside, outside, the drive and everything, what do you guys think about the Maserati? I know a couple other YouTubers have reviewed them. I've seen two separate ones. A couple, of, One review, it was a big Maserati Gran Turismo fan. And I know they were initially a little disappointed about losing the V8, but I think the, the turbocharged V6 surprised them a little bit. So let me know what you guys think. If you had $186,000, would the Gran Turismo be something you'd be interested in? Let me know. All right, everybody. I just put the GoPro on the outside of the car with a high strength mount. First time I put it on, it fell off. So what's it gonna do when I'm actually driving it? This is either gonna be really good footage that you'll see up there, or it's gonna be really bad because it's gonna fall and I'll lose pretty much everything I've recorded today. So with that said, let's see what we can do. This is a fun car to drive, I'm not gonna lie handles well, it takes off, you get great gas mileage, the interior is comfortable, everything's digital. I can say it's worth the money because that's subjective, but I definitely can see why people like the Grand Turismo. I really would like to get a zero to 60 launch, especially using their drag race thing here, and have the GoPro on the outside to see it. I tried a bunch of different shots today, um, had someone helping me they videoed outside and so you could see more of the car from the outside and drive while I was driving it um, so I hope everybody appreciates comment below if you you know if you like the, the new footage or the new shots I was able to get I'll try to incorporate that more I'm I'm progressing I'm evolving I'm not a professional youtuber I've mentioned that in many videos but you know I've got better equipment I've gotten better equipment um, you know thinking more about the type of shots that um, you all want to see so you know let me know if there's something else you want to see you know I, I include draggy footage I include you know, I'm including outside footage and I've got a GoPro precariously hanging on down there <laughs> hoping it doesn't fall but this thing is fun right. I'm gonna try to get a 0 to 60 everybody I'm gonna back up now this is on an incline so I'm not expecting to get a 3.7 
or a three nine. It's probably gonna be in the mid fours, I would think. On this end, it's because it's a pretty gradual steep incline here. Why do people pick to come down here when I come down here in this damn cul-de-sac? Nobody's ever down here. Nobody does anything down here. Yet they're gonna come down here while I'm down here. I'll pull in here for a minute and turn around and let these people go. Pack it up, straighten up. Well, that's pretty cool. It caught the car coming down on the digital display and turning around and coming in the front and it put an image of a car. I did that again. That's that's actually pretty damn cool. I got brake hold, going to drag race mode. Now I just need everybody to get out of the damn way. Let them get up a little bit. We're going to do this. Hopefully get it on the GoPro out there. I'll tell you what the time is when I get it here. And we'll head back to the dealership. All right, let's go. Hope everybody heard that exhaust. It was a 4.4 in the 60, um, 8.6 in the quarter. Um, but it was a pretty long, gradual incline there. So 4.4, four, I can live with, especially with that incline. Not disappointed in that at all. Not at all. We're gonna head back to the dealership. We're gonna wrap this up and I'll see y'all in a little bit. There you have it, everybody. The Maserati Gran Turismo 2024 Modena Edition. 483 horsepower, 442 pound-feet of torque, turbocharged V6. I got zero to 60 in 4.4 seconds going up an incline. No doubt in my mind it could do 37, 38, 39. It matches luxury with performance. And the inside, spectacular. the digital display, the technology, the infotainment center, the different modes you can put it in, even the drag strip mode. It gears luxury with performance. You can take a road trip on this. It's daily drivable. It's definitely a fun car. Special thanks to my friends here at Carlock, here in Brentwood, Tennessee. Please visit them on their website if you're interested in a Bentley, Rolls Royce, Maserati, Lotus, Aston Martin, Alfa Romero, they got it. So be sure to visit them. They were gracious enough to let me have this for about four hours today. We went over the inside, the outside. Comment below, tell me what you think. If you had the money, would a Maserati like this interest you? You know, or would you want something else? I'm gonna to try to review everything I can so everybody can see what they like, don't like, and anything like that. Hit the like and subscribe button, see more content, and check out the video to my left. And We'll see y'all later. Remember, if you're on the back roads of Mexico and you got a fun car or truck to drive, go ahead and give it the business. Have a good time with it, and we'll see y'all soon. Bye.